All right, hello. Um, I wanted to give a small talk uh, introducing MacroCompat, um, just because it's uh, sort of part of the type level family. I know it because I've uh, worked a little bit on it. And, um, and yeah, I thought it might be interesting for, um, uh, for people in general. And uh, it's sort of targeted towards uh, library authors um, that, on the one hand, want to use macros, and on the other hand, want to uh, provide support for Scala 2.10. Uh, so, it works. So just briefly, I'm going to talk about who I am, explain the domain of what MacroCompat deals with, uh, go into detail there, talk a little bit about the prior art of uh, MacroCompat, what, what, what was there before, um, introduce it, explain uh, a little bit about it, uh, how you use it, um, a little bit about the implementation so that it um, looks less le magical, sort of explain what, you know, what it's actually doing, uh, and questions. Um, so myself, my name's Dil Wynand. Um, I'm D Wynand, and I yeah. So I'm uh, participate in the open source community, uh, typically in Scala, and um, a little bit I try to help maintain SBT. And I work at Beamly in London um, as a software engineer. So the problem, uh, the, the, the problem domain that MacroCompat deals with is uh, macros. Um, now. I am not actually going to talk about macros because there is way too much talk to talk in 15 minutes. I tried, and slides started getting longer and longer and longer. But these are a couple of links um, that you can uh, sort of start with. Um, I am going to somewhat assume people have at least some understanding of what macros do and how you use them. Um, but what I'm going to talk about, because it's the domain of macro compat, is the differences between macros between Scala 2.10 and 2.11. Um, there's actually, like in researching, uh, in writing these slides, there's actually the change log uh, explaining all of these. I knew, I, I learned some of these uh, sort of, of you know, uh, hitting the problems, but there's actually a full list that you can read. Um, but I'm going to talk about uh, some of the ones that I know, some of the most common ones, um, and, uh, and how MacroCompat deals with them. So, uh, first of all, uh, in Scala 2.11, uh, macros were split. Uh, there were the original macros were split into white box macros and black box macros. Um, essentially, uh, the full power of macros is white box macros and black box are, uh, as my understanding, because I'm not an expert, but I just, uh, you know, somewhat less powerful. Um, but uh, but because it's less powerful, it's uh, easier to reason about, uh, maintain, and support. Um, but in just simply, I want to write some macro code and ship my library in different versions of Scala. Um, there are literally different uh, types. So the original Scala 2.10 type context um, is now deprecated, uh, and there is now a black box context and a white box map context. So if you want to write your library and you want to write a macro for it, and uh, everything is based on context in macros, uh, you're either going to uh, not support 2.10 because you're using types that don't exist in Scala 2.10, or you most commonly use just macros context and get deprecation warnings every time you compile in Scala 2.10, uh, 2.11 or 2.12. Uh, so that's the first sort of, it's you know, reasonably simple, you just type, type, type highly a set, and, but it's the first problem you hit. You know, I've got a context and it, now it's telling me it's deprecated um, or it doesn't exist if you're using a newer one. Um, other ones, a bit bigger problem is uh, a lot of APIs changed um, uh, between 2.10 and 2.11. Um, and I think this is because macros are actually so experimental, although you know, they're pretty widely used. Um, so I, so they, they changed the APIs. All the old APIs are still there. They still compile, but they're all deprecated as far as I understand. Maybe some of them are gone, but anyways. Uh, there are differences, and it's very much like the, the deprecated type. These are methods that are deprecated. So fresh, and new type name, and, uh, and, uh, and there's another uh, example at the end there. So uh, they're changed now to fresh name and just type name. And, uh, uh, and for instance, symbol of is uh, uh, a method that does what it do what that what's there above, uh, but doesn't exist in Scala 2.10. Um, so again, the common uh, theme that I've seen people do here is, uh, well, the simplest one is let's just keep using the old API and don't benefit at all from the new API, um, such as you know, clarity, what is fresh, well, it's a fresh name. Uh, and things like that, and just just suck up the deprecation warnings. 
Um, and, but you then you, know, you lose the opportunity to use uh, potentially you know, better, or more correct implementations like symbol of and just fall back to type of, type symbol. Uh, so thirdly is macro bundles. So macro bundles was a feature that shipped in Scala 2.11, um, and they are uh, hugely beneficial to, to use. They, uh, um, well, I'll show you what they look like. So uh, in Scala 2.10, all macro uh, implementations are just on an object, and uh, you, they're defined in terms of context, um, and so you just have this C uh, value that, you, that, that, that determines all your types. Um, and if, with uh, macro bundles, you, you can actually create class, and you get to the import at once, and you can stop thinking about C all the time. Actually, left by mistake, a C there. But yeah, so you can start talking about things without C prefixing them or putting them in your method uh, definition, because it's just once at the top, at the class level, that's your macro bundle. It also helps when you start, when your macros start getting a bit big, and you want to start reusing pieces of it, and you want to create a trait uh, of you know macro implementation, um, and then it gets a bit tricky because things need to be defined in terms of the C value. Anyway, so macro bundles, very, very useful, uh, a lot easier to write, and um, not available in Scala 2.10. Um, and thirdly, uh, there's some more beneficial things that have come in Scala 2.11, the ability to define things in terms of untyped trees, rather trees without the type annotation, the expression, um, which, uh, which, yeah, again, allows you to just write things like that on the bottom rather than um, everything in terms of expression, which typically means you just pull the tree out, do something with it, and then stick it back in an expression. Um, so that, again, just not available in Scala 2.11. Uh, um, so, you know, you, uh, commonly people just, well, some people don't even know. I didn't know about it until I found out about it. But, yeah, so that is another um, sort of problem. Uh, so, yeah, so as I said, I sort of said it as I was going, uh, people had to deal with um, having um, uh, this difference between the different versions. And um, a simple case, a simple way to, uh, to solve this is you just keep your source uh, trees completely separated. Um, you have one for Scala 2.11, one for Scala 2.10. Uh, gets things get more complicated. If you, so if you're that sort of mentality, then what do you do when you want to start supporting Scala.js? What do you want to do when you start supporting Scala 2.12? Um, so I know Shapeless did this. I don't know if anybody else uh, did it, but um, that was one approach. Uh, and the benefit there is that in 2.11, you get to use all the tools that are in 2.11. You get to use your bundles, and you get to use um, trees, wow. and, and, and the, the, the APIs that you actually want to use, because they're better, more performant, et cetera. Uh, and in 2.11, you just fall back to you know, whatever you have available to you. Um, so that's one approach. Uh, other people uh, did that, but instead of adding a sort of a source code a repository branches, they'll just do it within um, their source code. So uh, commonly, they'll have um, some object that represents their macro, and they'll have two complete copies, one for Scala 2.10, one for Scala 2.11, uh, and there'll be about three lines different between them, uh, but at least it's not the different branches. And that's another approach. Uh, sometimes you get a bit annoyed that you got maybe 60 lines of code or three lines are different, so you might create some small abstraction. You know, new type name is type name, and, or vice versa. Um, and, uh, and lastly, not exactly, um, sort of in a similar sort of domain, Macro Paradise, uh, I must mention, uh, is a library that uh, tries to, well, it, it brings features that are not in the compiler to the different versions. So um, a couple of, so two key examples is, um, Quasi quotes are in Scala 2.11, but provided in 2.10 by Macro Paradise. And uh, macro notations are in no Scala version, and they're provided for Macro Paradise and uh, used uh, you know, quite, a, quite a bit. So that was what happened before Macro Compat. So now, just, just sort of like brief overview of Macro Compat. Uh, it is a small library, I'll read it from here, which allows you to compile macros for Scala 2.10, which are written with the 2.11, 2.12 API. Um, so that's, the, that's where it's found. It was created by, by Miles. Um, and yeah, so what it provides um, to, to deal with uh, this problem domain is uh, forwarders for abstracting over the differences between the different APIs, um, the new type name, type name differences. 
Uh, it provides macro bundle support for older versions, so you get to use all those uh, benefits um, and uh, in your source code and ship your 2.10 library. Um, and also that, uh, that typed expression tree uh, thing is also provided for you. Um, so you get to use, so your source code can look like that instead of um, you know, wrapped in expressions. Uh, and it does this via a macro annotation called uh, bundle in the macro compat package. Um, just uh, in general, uh, we use MEMA to, to uh, check binary compatibility because um, because as it's sort of so low level, um, and then you know, we want it to be available for, for people to be using for their macros and their libraries, uh, we want to make sure that it uh, remains binary compatible. Uh, it's part of the type level family, and it's Apache 2 license. Um, so this is what it looks like. Uh, obviously, you need to add it to your build. I'm going to go with SPT here, and uh, so uh, that's the coordinates for uh, for the um, dependency, um, the version, and uh, because it's an annotation, a macro annotation, then you need to add par uh, macro paradise um, so that it you know has effect and it, it will do what it needs to do f to um, you know to make your code compile. And uh, in the simplest terms, uh, you take your Scala 2.11 macro bundle uh, implementation that you have, you annotate it with bundle, and, um, and all of a sudden, that code uh, which, uh, which worked in 2.11, now it also compiles in 2.10. Um, I've, I've, I've done it, I've, I've written code for 2.11, I wanted to add 2.10 support, add that, add that, and it, and it works in 2.10. Um, so, but how does it actually work? So again, just for reference, that's what, that's what you're doing. Um, so the only thing it can do, well, not the only thing, but what it does do, it, 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 makes, it transforms the code to how 2.10 wants things to be. Um, so it sticks things on an object, and, and it does a bunch of uh, other things to sort of wire them together. So uh, things that are in in expressions, sorry, things that are just trees get boxed into expressions, and things that are in expressions get unboxed to trees. Uh, there's a little bit of instance of happening to make sure the compiler is happy uh, and imports. But I just wanted to sort of outline uh, for people that might know what, how macros are in 2.10 uh, and this sort of magic that is macro compat. Uh, that's what it's doing. It's uh, it boxes your your context and it instantiates the macro bundle. That's how it does the macro bundle support. Um, it, uh, it puts trees and expressions and so forth, as I say. It fixes positions. And, uh, and it has this import, this compact universe, which is, again, that thing that people might grow a little bit on their own in their own libraries independently, uh, where they type alias methods. Um, and uh, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's how it works. Um, and that's how it provides the features that it provides. That's, that's it, really. Any questions? Um, so if my library only uh, supports Scala 2.11 and 2.12, is there a reason to use macro Um So currently, uh, there isn't, because as far as I know, uh, there are no differences in macros between 2.11 and 2.12. Um, so, but uh, the sort of uh, purpose and intent of Macro Compact um, is to, uh, to provide, for, for whatever the current version of Scala is, which obviously change over time, uh, provide support for um, other versions. So as 2.12 ships and if it comes with new Macro support, then the idea is that it'll try and allow, you know, bring those to 2.11, for instance. But right now, as far as I understand, um, there's um, no real reason. More questions? All right, then thanks. Thank you.